Hello, and welcome to a new episode of the Entrepreneur Enlightenment TV. Here is where we inspire, enlighten, and empower entrepreneurs to follow their purpose and achieve their impossible dreams. And today I have a very special guest, a very young, award-winning artist, and she had nothing to start with. She had to start from scratch and had to build it step by step until she really achieved amazing levels of success, worked with amazing brands, and she made a name for herself. So Nikki, please introduce yourself. Hi, I am so excited to be here and to share my story with all of you. So I'm a 25-year-old artist. I'm based in Southern California. And, you know, I started my career in the fashion industry. And after some success and a whole whirlwind of activity there, I decided, you know, I really felt in my heart that art was my true calling. And I had no idea where to start. I didn't have a family that necessarily supported that dream. And I started in this tiny little studio that was infested with insects. It had no light. And I still tried to make something happen. And from there, I've made a lot of big things happen. And I'm really excited to be here to talk more about it. So when you were young, like how young, are you? like you're very young now, 25, like, oh my God. When you were young, like when did you like, you felt that art in you? Like you felt I have to be an artist. Can you remember? I can. So I actually have this condition called synesthesia, which is where what I hear, I also experience in color. So I see words in essence. So from a young age, I remember learning to play the piano by learning what color the keys were. So I've always associated, you know, art with my understanding of the world. And I can remember being really little and just pulling out crayons or whatever I can get my hands on because I just I love to create and it helped me to make sense of the world. Oh, wow. So you felt you were an artist, then you kind of sense your family was not really encouraging of that because, you know, the world says like artists can succeed or can make a living and stuff like that. And how did you then, despite not having a leg up, as you say, despite not having things, how did you found that inside of you to go towards your dream? You know, at first, I it was it was really hard. There were many years in my life where I just kind of accepted that I wouldn't really be able to do the things I wanted to do because it was impossible. But then I decided that, you know what, why not go for the impossible? There's no reason why I couldn't be someone that succeeded. And the same is true for anyone listening. There's no reason why you can't be someone who succeeds. And what I really, how I kind of got underway is I really started looking at success in terms of, you know, not in terms of ROI in a different way. So I decided to go for a lot of different projects, even if they were a little bit low level or unpaid, because I just felt like once I got a foothold somewhere, then things would start to build. And so that's really how I kind of started to pave a way for myself was by taking that first step and finding some way for me to get a foothold. <laughs> it makes me think about when you like when people climb the, those walls and they just find a nook and they hold on there and then they lift themselves higher. So I exactly. feel like that's that's what you're describing. So what was your first like break? Like your first like, okay, now I'm mm. going. <laughs> So I spent a good amount of time trying to um, figure out exactly how I could break in. And the big thing that happened for me was actually I got to do an illustration. It was like a marketing illustration for this Aretha Franklin biopic um, that came out in 2021. And that was, was a really big movie, got nominated for Oscars. It was a really exciting opportunity to be able to do that. So that was my big break. Oh, wow. Like It makes me makes me blush when I hear about movies and stuff like that. So this was your strategy. Like this is something that I picked from your story, a strategy to go for projects, despite like they don't feel that they are going to pay a ROI, like big return on investment, but to lift you up to the next level. Exactly. And yeah. so this was like an inspiration you, you've learned this somewhere because this is really wise for, for everyone to try in order mm -hmm. to break through in an industry. 
I think there's a lot of, you know, talk out there about how oh, you got to accept you take what you're worth, you know, stand for what you're worth. And that is true. You should definitely get paid for what you're worth. But in the beginning, this is a lesson I learned the hard way. Sometimes people aren't going to see in yourself what you see in you. You have a dream and you believe in that. People might not see it. You know, there's lots of stories of people like Oprah or other famous authors or thinkers that were rejected quite a bit in the beginning. And so you have to kind of believe in that dream and know that it's not going to be forever that you're taking on a project or an internship or something that's unpaid or lowly paid. But getting a foothold, leveraging any kind of opportunity you can to get yourself seen is, I think, a really valuable and strategic approach, especially when you're breaking into something like an artistic industry that can be pretty competitive. Yeah, it's amazing. So if you remember yourself in that little tiny studio mm -hmm. and you see yourself like as if you can see yourself painting or wanting, what is something that you're most proud of when you look at that girl in that tiny studio that was infested and small and not lit, you said in your bio? Mm -hmm. What is something that makes you so proud of her? You know, that's a great question. And I'm picturing myself in that studio, you know, a few years ago. And I'm so proud that she didn't give up, you know, that that version of me decided that they were going to do this. And even though, I mean, there were nights where I didn't sleep at all, just, you know, painting, trying to make something happen. And it, it would have been easy to just stop and decide it was too difficult. But I'm so proud that she did not. And now I'm here and I can look back on a pretty exciting journey. Yeah, as you say, your, your mantra is the only impossible thing is for me to give up. Mm hmm. And, and I love that. That's why your, your your episode is called Painting the Impossible Dream. So now you broke through into the industry and you started to have success. Can you share a bit about like two, three big successes that were really juicy? Ooh, really juicy. So one of them happened... Actually, a couple of them are, are fairly recent, but last year I got the opportunity to have my art displayed at Rockefeller Plaza in New York City, which is, you know, it's an iconic place. So my art got turned into one of the flags. So they had this flag project. So one of the, um, there's flags to represent every country or most countries. And my art got turned into a flag and was displayed in Rockefeller Plaza. And after that was kind of turned into a part of the history of the plaza. It's displayed somewhere or saved somewhere. And that was so exciting for me. It was it was a really big opportunity. And I also just finally got to share yesterday after a long road, I am a published illustrator of an award-winning children's book series. And I got my copies of the book yesterday and I'm so excited about it. It was a huge undertaking. It was a monumental project that I've never done before. And that was really exciting. Wow. And when you're feeling those feelings, what is it? Is it pride, joy? Like what? is the feeling that you experience when you see your hard work now coming into the real world as you may and being shared and being appreciated, like to be turned into a flag and to be displayed in such an iconic place. It's meaningful. It is. It, it's, there's this feeling of validation, you know, because when you do, when you create anything, it doesn't have to be art, but when you put your heart into something there is something that is so special when it's seen and accepted and embraced. And for that to be on a scale of that level, it just means, it means the world to me to feel validated. And also, yeah, I feel really proud of myself. You know, I feel so, I'm just, I feel grateful. I feel proud and happy and also really motivated to keep moving forward and see what I can do next. Mm -hmm. So if you are to share something that you learn from success, because, you know, we learn from failure and from hardship, and then we get success and we need to learn from that and share. So inspiring others. What did you learn from those cool projects? You know, there's a couple things that I learned. One is 
really it's all a numbers game like you'll get you'll find success if you keep putting yourself out there enough it could be hard i know and it, it it can hurt when you don't when things seem to not be working out but they will eventually and that is that is just math you know i'm not a math head but that's something i do know probabilities it will work out if you keep working hard enough and the other thing is i really believe in following my heart when it comes to things that i go for and i think everyone has this internal wisdom inside of them that could point them in the right direction and if you let yourself listen to that voice it's usually usually not wrong whenever i've decided to go against that inner voice i've found myself in situations you know or going for projects that weren't really aligned but whenever i really was like this is something i should be going for or this is something i want to do and i leaned into that and i went for it it usually all worked out and so that's that, those are some of my bigger things yes like let your heart lead this is this is the path to success. This is the path to doing the things that only you are meant to do and that exactly. are extraordinary because our heart knows. And when we go into the brain, which is influenced by the world around us, it may not, it may distract us, but trusting that inner voice, trusting your heart is leading you to success as Nikki has found hers. Exactly. So I see, and we talked about having some paintings behind you. What is through your art? Because I know you said you like you're a, you're a painter, illustrator, muralist. Is there a through line through your art in all of those various aspects of your art? And I know you were in fashion as well. I, I didn't mention yeah. that. So it's like, it feels like different types of art. Are you a different person doing those different types of art or is the the same flow through those various art forms? My voice definitely comes through in every kind of art form that I'm doing. And I think that, well, I really aim to promote unity through my artwork and I really hope to inspire people to reach into their own inner light when they see what I'm doing and the through line how I kind of convey that is really my my paintings reflect parts of my own story so I grew up in America but I have parents who are immigrants from India and so there was this duality to how I grew up and there wasn't always this kind of unified feeling that I had within myself there was always this these two things are fighting each other and through my art I kind of like to blend those stories through characters and like in this painting th these are comics that are inspired by comics that uh, my dad read to me that are popular in India but she's kind of down here and she's in an American style so it's kind of blending you know that Indian and American and the same is true for, for her growing up in Southern California or in this painting. Um, you know, there's a lot of graffiti and surf culture. And so the sky is kind of graffiti letters. And then these the trees, if you could see them in the, the kind of flow through her hair, are gond trees, which is an Indian art form. So I really try to incorporate a lot of different worlds that bring my own story to life in my art. Mm, wonderful. And the parrots on the right behind you, what do they represent or what's the story? They look quite interesting. Thank you. So the birds, I actually painted this at a time when I was, I felt like I was on the verge of breaking through after a really difficult personal time. And so this, this was just a painting of freedom where I felt like I was about to be, you know, feeling a little bit more free. And so the birds are really that internal or external reflection of that internal feeling. And I actually also use like right there, um, Gond style birds. So there's still that, you know, paying homage to my own story, even in a painting that features birds. <laughs> yes. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. I can feel the energy of it. And you have one down there. Can you show it a little bit and talk about it? Yes. So this painting, if you can see, it's kind of a playing card. So you see like the, the, the queen. queen of 
Thy yeah. Mother, huh? Um, and I was in, in these two people, they're actually me. They're self portraits of me. Um, one is kind of a pop art style and one is more of a, like a, is an oil painting, more realistic style. And the, the, imagery above are all different kind of characters so this was kind of a a play on those two sides of me again you know there's and really reflecting that through the two different paintings of me and these characters are kind of representative of my inner world so it's kind of like these two external ways that of being that I have you know being American being Indian and then also my own internal world so that's kind of a a play on that in the playing card <laughs> nice and why the diamonds why the queen of diamonds instead of queen of hearts or just hmm. curious you know what I think it's because that wasn't necessarily a conscious thing that I was thinking about but I think what it what it really was is you know that diamonds develop out of pressure you know coal turns into diamonds and I think on that that is something that resonates with my own story of you know, that pressure, the hard work, um, the not so easy road, but it's turned into something beautiful. So I think that's what it comes down to subconsciously. Wow, what a beautiful story, how you painted the impossible dream. So how, how do you offer your art uh, to the public? So there's a few different ways, but one of the things I'm really excited about is launching a line of art prints. So when you guys are watching this episode, there's going to be that available through my website, which I'm very excited about. But if you're interested in originals, I sell originals. And I also do commissions or work with different brands. So any of those routes are great, but my print line is what I'm really excited about. So you'll definitely mm -hmm. want to check that out. <laughs> Yes, I'll ask you about it. So I'll ask you about it more. But I was curious with brands, like what kind of brands would you want to reach out to you or your art is more appropriate for? Can you share that? So some of the brands and clients that I've worked with have included like Harvard University. I did a piece that was for an Amazon Prime show. So I really love working with big commercial clients like that. But I've also done work for private clients for big paintings for their home. So I love being able to work with clients on a variety of scales. But those big commercial projects are really something that excites me and lights me up. So um, I don't know, maybe like Google or Facebook, those could be really cool clients to do art with or um, big fashion labels. Um, that would be cool to collaborate with the fashion brand. So mm -hmm. I know from your story, you said that you walked the virtual runway with your with your uh, clothing art or something like I that. Did. That was that was a very cool experience. That was during the pandemic, and I designed a um, collection that was a part of one of the world's first ever entirely virtual runway shows. It was it was talk uh, featured in Vogue actually that that show. It was a really exciting thing to be a part of. <laughs> Wow, amazing. So coming back to the art print, you shared with me that you would love everyone to have art to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that's why you do the art prints. Can you, I don't know, describe, I don't know if you can describe art prints, but I'm a novice. I don't mm -hmm. know how to describe art prints. Can you describe and share like why would someone reach out to purchase an art print and what would be the value to them to have it? Of course, that's a great question. So art prints come in a variety of, I guess, there's a variety of art prints. There are flat prints, which kind of mirror posters, but they're a little bit thicker. Um, there's also canvas prints. So it would literally look like this, but it would be just kind of a reprint of the painting. And the w prints are, and I'm planning on having those both of those offerings available and more. So you guys could pick whatever you would like if you're interested. And the value in art prints, interestingly, art print sales actually rose 20% according to the art market market last year. So they're really something that people are interested in. And I think the reason why is we our homes or our spaces, our offices are places we spend a lot of time in. And there are places that we want to feel at home in that reflect our values and reflect beauty. 
And art is one of the best ways to add that to your space. But it's also understandable in this economy that not everyone can buy an original painting. So art prints kind of solve that problem where you can have art that is original in terms of the idea and the creation behind it. But it's a reprint of the original so that, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to acquire it. So you can make your home beautiful and not have to spend too much. So that's really the, the value and the power of art prints. Yes, and for me, like I'm a person who likes the space. I set it and I, I like it the way it is. But mm -hmm. I have friends that they like with each season to change their art. Mm -hmm. So I think the art prints will be really valuable for, for those people that because they feel like it's a new season, I want a different energy in my living space. And then the art prints will come in really handy. Exactly. That's a great point. Yes. You can have, you know, if there's more of a floral painting, maybe you want that up during the spring and maybe a, a, a painting that has more blues, you know, in the winter time. That's a great point that you could easily interchange your art. Mm -hmm. And is there a website or somewhere where people could go? To yes. So the best places to go would be my website, which is www.nikki-studio.com. And then my Instagram, which is at Nikki, N-I-K-I, Srinivasa, S-R-I-N-I-V-A-S-A. -I -I Wonderful. So thank you for being with us. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you are inspired to go for the impossible dream, to paint your own impossible dream, to know that you can do it. You can start in very bleak conditions and achieve success and work with one of the biggest brands in the world and and do your art form in so many ways. Thank you, Nikki. And you so everyone, I hope to see you again in the next episode.